Have you ever opened your phone or your laptop and as soon as you open your Facebook, all the things that you see on your feed are toxicity? Worry no more, let me share to you my favorite adulting content on Facebook. If you are subscribed to this channel knowing that this channel is about personal finance, self-help, and adulting, I'm assuming magugustan niyo yung content ni The Woke Salary Man. Most probably you've seen their content na on Facebook. But for those people who are unaware, I'd like to share to you yung content nila because I really love it. I'll leave links in the description box down below. I'm planning to talk about three of their articles na ginawa nila, but only a portion of it. So let's start with this one. Career mistakes you seriously need to avoid in your 20s. They cited five career pitfalls here, namely, being afraid to leave a toxic job because you haven't stayed long enough, not negotiating or asking for a pay increment or other benefits, giving up early and becoming a private hire driver, blindly joining MNCs with the wrong expectations, expecting work-life balance and high pay to go together, lastly, having a wage slave mentality. I want to focus on the last one, wage slave mentality, because this is something that me and my friends always joke about. And yung term na ginagamit namin dito si Alipi na Salapi, na every time na mag-uusap kami at sasabihin namin, ayoko na ng trabaho, gusto ko na mag-resign, mag end up kami na sasabihin namin, at puta, wala akong choice kasi alipin pa din ako ng salapi. So alam mo yun, yung feeling na ganun. Well, going back dun sa article, I love these three lines that they wrote. If your job pays you enough, then great. But if you have a full-time job, no longer pays you enough, no guarantee a future, you have to take matters into your own hands. They really suggest na gumawa ka ng paraan to take control of your life. In today's era, we firmly believe in side hustling. If you're paid to work from 9 to 6, don't spend the best years of your life working 9 to 2 a.m. If you're going to work that hard, we'd rather go back home at 6 and work for yourself. What they suggest is if you don't see a future na in your corporate life, stop putting too much time on it. Instead, build a side hustle. If your work demands you to work from 9 to 6, just work from 9 to 6. Don't go to overtime. Instead, what you do from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., you start building your dreams. I remember yung isang uh, speech ni Carlo Ople. You might have known him as the YouTuber na, na nagre-review ng mga sneakers sa Philippines. But for me, Carlo Ople is one of the greatest public speakers here in the Philippines. I remember yung CSB TED Talk niya and I'd like to share that to you. Here's one big point that I'd like to stress this morning. There is no excuse to not make a living doing what you love. In today's age, uh, where the internet is so big and there are so many things you can do, where the walls of commerce, the walls of business have been broken down, there is absolutely no reason for you to not make money doing what you love. So what is the 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. principle? 8 to 5, you build your career. 7 to 1, you build your dreams. The road less traveled is really to pursue what you want to do. But the road less traveled is the hardest path to take. When people say follow your dreams, follow your passions, it actually means work harder, work smarter, give more of yourself, give more of your time, and don't think for a second that the world owes you anything. That's what it means to follow your passion. You are not supposed to follow or listen to your heart. You're supposed to lead it. It's an active thing. It's not something that just falls magically on your lap and then you become successful overnight. It takes a lot of hard work. Last and most important, they end their article with these phrases. Learn a new skill, practice what you learn at work on a personal project, pick up a new qualification, build your portfolio, and then get paid for it. If you are willing to work the hours outside work while people are catching a movie or a Netflix, it will put you far ahead of your peers. But you gotta be working for yourself, not your boss. Stay woke, salary man. The second article that I wanted to talk about is called Why I'm Shamelessly Downgrading. I've talked about this in several of my past videos before and I actually did it and I'm happy with it. What I can attribute with this regarding to my life is yung minimalism. Back when I was college, I used to buy excessive sneakers. And dumating ako sa point na para after a few years of buying excessive sneakers, I asked myself, bakit ko pa to ginagawa? And I end up admitting to myself na wala lang, I just wanted to look cool. And after that, I realized na mali yung ginagawa ko and I stopped buying unnecessary things. There's a lot of benefits that you could attribute to minimalism or downgrading. Yung pinaka-common dito is spending less and being able to save more. But in my case, hindi ganun yung case ko. What I can attribute to minimalism and downgrading is yung flexibility ko to be able to parang pursue what I really wanted. Kasi uh, what minimalism does for me is I wasn't being chained with extra bills and extra work because for the people who are trying to build their passion into their career, yung capital naman nila is time and not money. Let me explain.
this is your passion and you want to turn it into your career. And the reason why you need time is because that will be the bridge that will connect your passion to your career. Time will allow you to put in the work to improve your skills in your passion. And without time, you won't be able to put in the necessary amount of work to turn that passion into a career. You should definitely look at unnecessary work and unnecessary bills as subtractions to your dreams because it takes time from your passion and instead of parang having the time in your passion building your skill, diba, ilalaan mo yung oras mo on bills, on work, and yun, parang it stops you from achieving your dreams. Don't get caught trying to look cool or buying that designer clothes or designer shirts or buying that flagship phone. Those are just distractions for you. If it doesn't help you achieve what you want, then don't spend money and time on it. Third and last article is why you need to stop saying money cannot buy happiness. And he started this article by saying, And I think I totally agree dun sa sinabi niya. It's a common misinterpretation. It's like the same with the quote na money is the root of all evil. Pero yung nakalimutan nilang idagdag dun, yung complete na quote na yun is the love for money is the root of all evil because that means greed. So yun, parang putting that greed na word or parang interpreting love for greed, parang it gives you a different sense of perspective about money. Money is just a tool. It's just a special paper that we use to buy goods or services. And at the end of the day, it's us who's controlling our money. We could do good things or bad things with our money. At the end of the day, it's all our choice. Anyway, she still cited that there are things that money still cannot buy. Money cannot bring back the time we miss. Money cannot bring back uh, our loved ones from death. And I have totally made peace with it and I para accepted it and I'm happy with it because without it, para hindi mo ichi cherish yung mga special moments mo. To put a conclusion with money and happiness, I'd love to use yung peace ni Casey Neistat. So let me share to you one of his videos. I thought about it further. Okay, ready? Rich or poor, we all face these problems. Problems that I'll call life problems. Life problems are things like finding happiness and finding love and a sense of fulfillment in your life and a sense of purpose maybe in your career etc these are life problems these are problems we all rich or poor encounter money won't solve these problems but when you're broke on top of and I mean that literally and figuratively on top of these problems you've got money problems and money problems are things like how am I gonna pay rent how am I gonna pay for food? I'm sick and can't afford to go to the doctor. I can't get a job because I can't drive to work. I don't have any nice clothes to wear to that job interview, and things like that. And I think the hardest part of, of money problems is that when you have money problems, they can drown out these other issues. Like, if you're feeling down in life, it's hard to work on your happiness when you literally might not know where you're gonna sleep. It's hard to like dwell too much on a relationship when you literally don't know where your next meal might come from. And you're not exactly worried about fulfillment at your job when you have no way to get there and you got no clothes to wear. And it, you get the idea. Money cannot totally buy happiness, but it can solve your money problems, which allows you to pursue happiness and other more important things in life. <laughs>